You are now listening to The I. Walter Show. Real talk about nothing. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird brain. It's a plane. It's I. Walter. I. Walter. Yes, it's I, Walter, a strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. I, Walter, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend ears with his annoying voice, and who disguised as Walter Interanti, mild-mannered janitor for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth, nonsense, and the American way. And now, another exciting episode in the adventure. Adventures of I, Walter. All right. Hey, this is I, Walter. I wasn't actually going to do a show. I had no desire to do one. I just wanted to kind of let simmer what I had um, previously did on my last show, basically being more upfront about my past than probably I've ever been in quite a while. This is Wednesday morning, July 22nd. Sexton, yes, that would be great. Um, July 22nd on twenty um, on the year 2015 at 2.40 a.m. I'm doing this a little bit earlier than I normally do, not by much. Um, the reason being is because I tomorrow i got to get, uh, I'll probably do a show, I don't know yet, um, while I'm doing laundry and then I'm... Um, Thursday, I'm heading down to shore, uh, oceans, um, Atlantic City. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get ready for that. Yeah, um, I was funny. I was watching my show again that I got into. I want to eventually get to the point I can watch the extras, and I don't know if I'll get through them all. There's just so many. It's a show, Ghost Whisperer, with uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt. I guess one thing that's kind of a little bit depressing about the show more than anything else, um, I think up to this point, well, probably most of the show, all five years, were actually probably shot on location inside of the studio, um, which I, that's now going quite a few years now that I actually was out with my parents. They went with me um, out to um, Burbank, California, which is actually is Los Angeles. I was out there for a Doctor Who convention and um, spent more time, actually, I really could care less once I got out there. I spent about a couple hours here and there at the convention, but I found it actually more interesting to be able to, it's like, hey, I'm out in Hollywood. I'm going to look around. It was not what I expected, um, but it was really fun, and I really enjoyed that. Um, The thing I liked the most, I actually did go to... um, Universal. Um, it was funny. I actually got sick on the ride because that's now the anniversary day for Back to the Future. There was the Back to the Future ride out there, and I, I literally got sick on it. Even though I didn't go anywhere, it really just got to me. Um, we actually went through this Terminator thing as well, Terminator 3D or whatever. They might even call it 4D. It scared the crap out of my mother because it literally looked like things were coming out at you. Uh, more so than I've ever seen before. I thought by you know now they would actually do that in movie theaters, but they haven't yet. Maybe it's just because it's so costly to do that, make something literally look like it's coming out of the set. I mean, that was so cool. But my mo- my favorite thing being out there was actually going into these mildewy, musty type settings of the studios. And it's like, why do you find that so interesting? Well, actually... It was because that's the way it kind of felt like when I worked one internship, this place called Pottstown TV. It was that musty, and it was like, there's no way real TV studios look this like a dungeon. And it was like, yeah, they actually do out in California. So to me, that was just, um, that was, to me, that was like better than Disneyland. That, that, like, I, I literally died and went to heaven. And I, I mean... I did not want to come home. I literally did not want to come home. I was just so excited. Being That was Warner Brothers, by the way. Um, and I've been saying this for years. I want to go out there, and it's been, God, it's going to probably eventually going to get up to almost 10 years. Not 
it's not quite there yet, but it's getting probably pretty close. Which is really depressing. I think it was the beginning of the year two thousand somewhere. I I can't remember. I get mixed up with dates and stuff. Um, anyway, why I'm bringing it up is like Ghost Whisper. I recognized like I saw something on YouTube or something, and they were saying, "Oh, this is where uh, Ghost Whisper was shot." It's supposed to be um, a fictional town that actually it's a real town in New York, um, but they actually made a replicate town. Replica, you know, whatever you call it, um, in Universal. Well, I would say it's got to be Warner Brothers because they're, I don't know, if, they're the two biggest studios out there is Warner Brothers and Universal. I think they must do everything because it looked really familiar and it was like, wait a minute, I think I was there when I, we did like, my parents and I did a, a Warner Brothers tour. It was like, do you really want to do that? Because all it is is just studios. It's like, yeah, that to me is, is like more exciting than any like amusement park. That was what I wanted to do. So watching Ghost Whispers, recognizing the studio sets that they use for the quote unquote, they actually use some of these neighborhoods that are off. You know, they're not real neighborhoods. They actually have full houses on there because most of the stuff is just a front uh, for city streets and stuff. They're they're actually just fronts. There's no back to these buildings. Um, they're, you know, that's all shot in studio then, but for their outdoor shots and, you know, California doesn't get bad weather. So, you know, the, I remember them saying they back when I went out to California, I said, eventually they're gonna have to change this, but the streets are actually made of, um, like styrofoam. I'm not even kidding. They're made of like basically very cheap material. And they said, well, once we go completely full, you know, high def, which a lot of, stations have some haven't yet um they said we're gonna it's gonna cost more money that's probably why even uh stuff you bought when you purchase tickets or actually cable why it's gotten so expensive because yeah they had to change over they had to throw a lot of old props out that out actually also includes like talk shows because you can't get away with the really cheap props they could get away with with regular uh, conventional TV. So um, I was watching it today, and it just blew my mind, by the way, with Ghost Whisper, because it was one called, ironically enough, it was called Ghost and Machine, which is actually, I think that was, I think it's Ghost and Machine is some type of comic, I think, that they actually made into a movie um, that was also a uh, cartoon, so to speak. But um, it reminded me of Ghost Machine, the episode on Ghost Whisper, reminded me, um, it just, God, it was so great. It re- uh, certain scenes remind me exactly like Tron slash um, that one movie, um, well, actually it was two. The second one had Lady Gaga. Um, Sin City, a little bit like Sin City. And um, and this, I'm talking Ghost Whisper now, and also that movie about the the girl who um, it was some kind of weird film where they add. I can't remember the name of the film off the top of my head. It's like on literally on the tip of my tongue. Um, but it was some girl. She was like um, locked up in a mental institution, but they used both. You know, there was all real actors, but they combined it with like that surreal look. Well, that's what this episode actually incorporated into. And it was like, wow, it really blew my mind. Also, I was a little annoyed at first, but they got rid of one of my favorite, my like one character I really liked. This guy looked a lot like Randall from Clark's, this actor. And he actually, ironically, is from New Jersey, and for some reason they wrote him off. I don't know if it's permanent. And they replaced his character um, with, they basically transitioned his other character in with Jamie Kennedy. And it was like, wait a minute, Jamie Kennedy? And I looked it up, it's like, yeah, that's him. But the last time I had saw any, or, you know, watched anything with Jamie Kennedy, because he was on MTV, I think, years ago, was in this movie called Malibu's Most Wanted, and some friend said, yeah, I really liked that movie. I thought it was hilarious. I I never laughed so hard in my life. 
I know most people don't like that movie. In fact, they find it very irritating. But it was like, wait a minute, is that the same guy? And it was like, they said he's a comedian, but it, Jamie Kennedy looks so different from Malibu's most wanted to when he actually got on the show as a regular on Ghost Whisper for the last two seasons. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, it was pretty interesting. He looks really different, though. And this is actually dated now, these shows, but... Um, I mean, these are at least over seven years old now since it's been um, off the air. So anyway, um, yeah, it's kind of strange. And then a friend t- uh, texted me and he said, you know, Jamie Kennedy, the reason she had him on was because that's one of her, uh, um, I was ready to say Sarah Michelle Gell- Geller, but it's actually um, Jennifer Love Hewitt. It's one of her ex-boyfriends. So he had a shoe in on that job. So it kind of sucks in a lot of ways. Maybe the other guy actor had a better deal for a different job and she had to replace him. Or, you know, it's just kind of weird how she picks an ex-boyfriend to play as a regular. And he's actually completely, like, so far, I've only watched, like, three of the new... uh, It's in season four of the episodes with him. But he's, like, a large part of the show with her. So it's just kind of ridiculous because... I like when they kind of combine all the different characters that they come up with on that show, of what I watched so far, I should say, because the show's been off for years. But anyway, um, I guess you get probably tired of me talking about stuff like that. I'm sure my one friend, I found out I only had like two listeners uh, the last two days, so, and one of them, one of the listeners is most likely me, because I actually just listened to my own podcast just to um, do, you know, figuratively speaking, like a proof read, more or less proof listen to see where I screwed up. Anyway, um, I'm going to keep this kind of lighthearted because I want to get back, watch one more episode and get ready for work or get ready for bed so I can get ready for work tomorrow at a decent time and not right climb out of bed and go right to work. One thing that kind of irritated me, and it kind of stuck in my mind after watching, this is another reason I brought this up, about this episode called Ghost World. Um, Another level that this got to me, it was about a pedophiliac. And it's like, okay, now that's how I feel at work all the time. Because I mentioned, um, I basically, like this show, um, I think out loudly. Because basically all I'm doing right now, I'm talking to a mic. I will put this up online, but I'm basically talking to myself, which I do all the time anyhow. This way I have the excuse, well, I'm doing it for a show. I can't say that at work, but I have a very loud voice that carries. And um, I called a few friends and I said, yeah, this one girl at work, she's really hot looking, but she dresses completely inappropriately. So I might have mentioned this yesterday, and if I did... I apologize for just recapping it, but that's all I am going to do, just recap. So she had on, I mean, she might as well just stand on a street corner because she dressed so um, inappropriately for work. It was like either you're going to go to a fitness fitness center to work out where you're going to grab a lot of guys' attention because she's very attractive, or you're going to be standing out on the street corner, and I probably would want to pick you up because you do look incredibly hot, but you are extremely in a, you're dressed inappropriately for work. She had these extremely tight compression pants on that her ass, like every there was like, there was like three guys standing behind her, and she didn't realize it, but one guy had his head buried right at her ass, staring at it. I mean, he stared a hole right through her anus. I might have mentioned this yesterday. So I left a couple of voicemails for different friends, and I was like, I can't believe she gets away with dressing like this. I even told a friend that's a co-worker who no longer works directly with me. She laughed about it, but then miraculously today, the same girl who just dresses so inappropriately, it was like uh, night and day, she miraculously wore like the baggiest pair of jeans she probably owned. And, I mean, it was like, okay, obviously... Somebody overheard me saying that she's just dressing inappropriately, which, yes, she was. But number two, um, again, somebody overheard overheard me, or maybe if I did mention this on my show, maybe 
there was more than just two people that listened in, and somebody just said, hey, do you hear what Walter said about so-and-so? Because I didn't give anybody his name out. I never do. They kind of know what I'm, who I'm, whom I'm talking about because I actually make it very descriptive to that person, but not to anybody else. So anyway, I go in today, and this person, we have these things. We have a meeting um, at the end of day shift, beginning of my shift. We have another meeting at the end of my shift and the uh, beginning of our third shift position, people. So this girl did not show up for our meeting today. You're supposed to because tonight I actually ran down for my closing meeting for the night, and I forgot to show up. I didn't actually forget to show up. I actually came down like a few minutes late, and I got reamed a new a-hole saying, you know, you really need to go to these meetings. Don't miss another one. Now, this girl this afternoon who did not show up and who decided, well, I'm not going to dress like a street hooker, um, didn't show up, and they didn't say anything. So I don't like to use the word double standard, but there is actually no other word to use for that. So that's the end of that. But um And I always get like people just walk by me like I'm a ghost myself. Like I don't, I'm not even there. And it's not by like just one or two people, it's by like everyone. And it really, really gets irritated. Now, I'll bitch and complain about, well, people are sitting there watching TV shows or movies, and I'll do the same, but I hate to say it, I also get all my work done. So it's one, and I do it right. So it's one thing. To not do your work and just sit there for eight hours or 16 hours getting paid numerous amount of money and not doing your job. It's another thing if you get your work done, and I work pretty fast, if I get my work that was given to me done, then whatever is left over, unless you wanted to continue just to pile work on me to be a, you know an asshole, which some people at work would do that, Um. I, you know, did what you asked me to do, and I can't go home, so I'm going to do whatever time I have, I'm going to do what I want to do. And I actually try to get all my work done before I even take any of my breaks. Technically, eight-hour shift, you should get two mini breaks and a lunch. I don't bother to take anything until I'm completely done that I don't have to get started. Because, like, for some reason at work, they did a statistics at our job most of the injuries we get like we get every year of people getting hurt guess when they happen after their 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 breaks because you kind of wind down which is good but you should take breaks personally when you feel like you're ready for a break like if you're not going to like work 6 or 7 hours and say well you know um I don't know why I'm exhausted if you can do it though like I like to focus and get something done I like to push my myself to get my job done um that's just the way i am so because i have a a friend at work who does the same thing she's she says i'd rather get all my work done and then just take my breaks and that's what i do but i don't start late or you know try to push my work on other people i do my job and then later on when i have time to focus on stuff then, you know, I'll sit down and if I have time, I will watch a TV show or something that I have that I bring to work, um, like DVDs of TV shows like Ghost Whisper or something. But I make sure I get done what they ask me to do because they're paying me enough. And there has been many nights where I never get a break. Like I'm entitled to basically close to an hour worth of breaks which I never take, so that's money in their pocket that they didn't have to pay me or anyone else to do the work they gave me. Lately, it's been slowing down on my job, so I've been taking advantage of that. Not in the way you're probably thinking. So that being said, though, um, yeah, what was I going to say? It was ironic tonight because I had was asked to do a job that the other week they had 12 people doing, and I did it myself, 12 people. And there was um, a similar job they had actually six people doing, and you're probably asking, well, how do you know that? Were you there? No, I wasn't, but actually the cleaning um, supplies they use, like um, cleaning material, I'm talking like mop buckets, mop handles, 
things you used uh, to clean certain areas um, was basically a total of six to 12 items like um, if it was a mop handle or, you know, uh, you know, for not dry mopping, but wet mopping floors, we mop our floors with chemicals and also our countertops and stuff because we make products. So why would you have six bottles or 12 bottles, six mop handles or 12 mop handles unless you had six or 12 people working? You wouldn't do that for one or two people. So the bottom line is, I work by myself, I get my work done correctly, and if you have a problem with that, and they even try to, again, give me the work of 6 to 12 12 people, um, you better have a very good excuse besides that I am just goofing off. So, you know, what I just said could probably make most people say, well, you're a hypocrite because you're telling me, if I haven't said this, this is why I'm saying most people would say I'm a hypocrite, because I'm telling um, you know, I get pissed off when other people just sit there watching movies or TV shows, but they're doing it for eight hours. They're not doing it for an hour, for two hours. They're doing it for eight. Now, if I have eight hours worth of work to do, and I always put my mouse, myself in that mind frame, okay, there could be a day I'm going to come in and I'm going to have barely any time for any type of break. And in those days, I'll try to take, do something. And most of my meals anymore for the last three months have been a liquid diet anyway. I've been living on these uh, protein shakes. So I don't eat any solid food. I take it to a desk that I have for myself, you know, a personal desk, office desk. And I eat and drink there, and then I go right back to work. So there's been almost 70% of the time I'm working up until when I leave. Once in a blue moon, it's been a lot more lately for the last two or three weeks. If I have more time, then yeah, I will sit down and kind of just unwind and relax. But I do make sure my job is done. I don't leave anything for anyone else. In fact, I do most of their work too, depending on whom it is and if it's pertaining to my type of work. Like I can't do somebody else's job that I'm not qualified to do. That's what I'm trying to say. So that's enough. Um, I'm probably already going longer than I wanted to. I always say this every night. Last night I said it was going to be a short show. It was actually almost close to an hour. It was 10 minutes shy. Anyway, there were some interesting articles. I always say that. I know that. Um, This one really got me off guard, but it's from moviepilot.com, and it says, Move over, Batsy. The Suicide Squad trailer is actually killing... Batman versus Superman in views. So that's actually a little bit. Um, it's very cool, in fact. And why? Why am I saying that? Well, it's cool because I really had no hope for that um, Suicide Squad movie. I really didn't have much hope for Batman versus Superman, and because they were showing all the behind the scenes when they were shooting every scene, and it was like when I actually saw. A trailer, it was like, you know what, these look really good. And I know, I'm hoping, I'm guessing, because I've never read these, so I can't really give an honest answer, but it seems like at least with the Suicide Squad, and what I read about uh, Batman vs. Superman sound really cool, they're actually going for the real gritty, dark, adulterated graphic novels you will find in the comic book store. So they're not going for the cutesy... Let's make it a little humorous. Um, let's make it safe. I think they kind of threw all that out, is my guess. And the Suicide Squad, at least, looks like they're going to go for, like, okay, this is going to be meant for, you know, a more, I, it's going to be funny for me to use this word, but probably from, um, from what I'm seeing, a more mature audience, meaning somebody who's a little bit older than just a little tween. Um, That's my guess, and what I'm seeing. And it looks like, at least for Batman versus Superman, I thought I read somewhere. Let me see if I have that story. I'm going to look through these really quick. Oh, um, 
there is speculation now. This is on MoviePilot.com, and it's titled, This is why Doomsday will be the villain in Dawn of Justice. This is their speculation that, which would be awesome. They're actually going to use Doomsday, um, they think, in Batman versus Superman. So that would be pretty cool. Um, my thought was, though, wasn't it Doomsday? I thought it was Doomsday. Maybe it wasn't who actually kills Superman also. So, um, if that's the case, that they use Doomsday, I wonder if they're going to go with that premise. I don't know. So, anyway, um, I'm not going to read that one, but that was, again, on MoviePilot.com. Yeah, but it looks like they're going again with the um, Suicide Squad, and there's going to be a, like a, a cameo of Batman somewhere in the film um, into that universe of DC. DC is going to probably make a comeback next year, and it's going to be probably, hopefully, a pretty strong one by the looks of it. Um, I found this one tonight, a different article. It was on comicbook.com instead of Movie Pilot. And it says Backstreet Boys and NSYNC uh, team up for a zombie western futuristic horror movie. It actually sounds pretty cool because I forget. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm trust me, I'm not some wacko. Well, I am a wacko, but I'm not some. I I don't want to be say anything completely off, uh, inappropriate, so to speak, because you know we live in this politically correct world now. Um, but I used to like some of the, the songs from these, you know, boy bands and it doesn't make me, cause I'm not, I'm going to try to say this without offending anybody of all two people, but I'm not gay. Um, but it says the studio behind Sharknado franchise is developing dead seven, a zombie Western futuristic horror movie that will feature members of the Backstreet Boys and the NSYNC. Sinker, Joey uh, Phaeton. I don't even know that fucking guy's name, so I don't care. But I found it really cool. I do like... I don't think I saw the first one. I got the TV guy because it had Sharknado 3 in there. Is it Sharknado 3? Yeah, I guess it is. Um, Because I saw at least the second one. I really liked it. And again, I remember there was one song. I think it was from NSYNC. I can't remember if it was NSYNC or Backstreet Boys. They did some Halloween themed music video, and the song was really cool. This was like years ago, and it was like, okay, these guys are pretty good. It's like one of these guilty pleasures. It really is. So I thought it would be kind of cool to see these guys if they do this. I think they probably do a pretty good job. You know, I'm giving, I'm playing, the, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt at least. Um, let's see if I have any. Oh, um, this is a spoiler, so I'm probably not going to read too much. Cinemablend.com put on how The Walking Dead will probably end. So I'm assuming before they start the prequel, I thought they were going to just run them side by side, but I guess um, it will be coming to an end, it looks like, for Walking Dead before they start Fear of the Walking Dead. Um, in the past five years, The Walking Dead has not only become one of Cable's most popular series, but it also has gotten a lot more exciting and interesting as the plot has moved forward to its current location in Alexandria. See, I went down. I saw where they shoot the walking dead. A friend sent me a story that they're getting tired of people stalking um, the shooting grounds for, no puns intended, for a uh, walking dead. Um... So, yeah, I'm not going to read any more because it might have some spoilers in there. I don't want to ruin it for anybody who, out of the two people, might be listening. I just saw something with Howard Stern, so I'm going to have to look for this again. It was on the same page. Um, how Howard Stern once tried to make a Marvel movie. I didn't know this, so that obviously caught my attention. I haven't seen Ant-Man yet either. Um... Ant-Man is already a phenomenon, because I already read the first part about Howard Stern trying to make a Marvel movie. Um, In the superhero movie genre, a D-list comic book hero who made, uh, who can shrink down to the size of an an ant 
while gaining super strength, earning the top spot in the movie box office. Seems far-fetched, but what's even weirder is the man who almost made Ant-Man movie before Marvel's cinematic universe was even a thing, and that man is Howard Stern. That is interesting. I did not know that. So I'm going to have to put that on my Facebook. So Howard Stern was actually going to make Ant-Man. Um, I did not know that. Try to add it to my my links. So that was one story I didn't expect to put in my my mix. So now that I did, it's pretty cool. I don't know. I'm I'm just like not too gun ho. I was at one time. Now I'm not to see Ant Man. I don't know why. Um. Anyway, I'm doing a lot of pausing tonight, so I gotta stop doing it. I assume. Um. I'm not sure if I'll have much more to read. There was a story in a local newspaper, residential fires. No injuries in West Norton fire caused calls under investigation. Uh, Montgomery County detectives in Pennsylvania state police fire investigators are working to determine the cause of a fire that torched through upper floors of a twin row house in the first block of Central Street Tuesday. At least no one was injured, so... That was in my local paper. Ooh, sorry about that. I actually get distracted even on online. There's something um, I'm looking at it now. Mac trades. So I have a quad core Xeon processor system Mac, and there's this one link. They actually got some really good deals. It's called MacAllTrades.com. I think it was this one or another one. You can actually get an eight core, eight core Mac. Um, you know the old tower, which I have, I like those much better, for like four hundred bucks, and it was like, wow, that is really, really good. And um, I was actually even considering doing it because it would be cheaper than me trying to suffer through tearing the machine apart and putting in, um, you know, an upgrade kit. Um, so yeah, I was actually really tempted to do that. Um, but actually, at this point, I might be honestly done with my show for tonight. I'm just going to do a last-minute check to make sure, because um, that's why I'm just stalling for time. Otherwise, I probably will say I'll see you tomorrow. Um, yeah, folks, I'm sorry about that. Um, well, folks, it's me and somebody else probably, so me and my one friend. Who actually listens to me so um yeah so there's nothing really much i actually wanted to say too um i might be able to show i'm hoping maybe my my short film i did about a year ago a friend might be able to actually show that at a horror fest it's not a horror fest um thing it's a really bad trying to be um make a comedy thing that I did called the train stations on YouTube and Walter and Toronto, the train station, he said, I might be able to show this as an introductory thing for a horror fest, like maybe leading into one friend's film, which I had bought again. Oh, excuse me. Oh, so I shouldn't do that on the radio. Um, a friend had posted on his, um, I bought it, but he, um, I originally bought it on, on a DVD, but he actually now was able to make uh, special copies that will be released on VHS, and it looks really cool. Uh, it's Ryan, um, I don't want to get Ryan's, Ryan Vincent Lo- Logston. He, he, I like his movies, so, uh, you know, and the video thing on VHS looked not only nostalgic, it just looked damn cool. Um, but I was telling uh, this friend Ryan, for, um, I was hoping to maybe try to hook up with another friend's brother and this one other friend because um, I would like to do a documentary on you know abandoned homes like a haunted house. Uh, this one friend of uh, friend's brother, he's obsessed with finding haunted houses and. Um, you know, abandoned homes that he assumes that they're haunted. And it was like, that would be perfect for a documentary. 
which I would love to do with him. So I'm trying to set that up. He said he'd like to do it this year, but I don't know. So I'm I'm trying to keep my fingers crossed at least. So that was one of my other things. Anyway, other than that, um, everyone have a once I can figure out have a good um, Wednesday morning because it might be the last one I'll do for a couple days. Maybe not. I don't know. So everyone have a good Wednesday morning.